Hello everybody, I am going to be creating a mixed media canvas today. I am using a lot of the same techniques and uh, layout that I used for a similar canvas, but I used black gesso on that one. This one I'm going to be using white gesso, and instead of waxes, I am going to be using gesso to highlight the areas that I want. So I will have a link to that video that I'm talking about in the upper right hand corner, and so you could check it out if you want to. I am using a Prima watercolor canvas, or panel I should say. I am basically using it the same way as you would a canvas you would get at the craft store. I love using the watercolor panels a little bit more because they are a little bit more sturdy than a canvas. So I am taking, I actually added, I'm sorry, going back a little bit, I added a coat of gesso and you want to do this because it is watercolor paper on the panel if you do use a watercolor panel like I am. So you want to add gesso to prime it and then I am adding some light paste and I love light paste instead of modeling paste. It is airy and it dries a little bit quicker and when I add a lot of color like uh, sprays and stuff, it doesn't, it holds up better than modeling paste I found. So as that dries, I am taking a Prima frame and just adding some string around it. And I did this in the video that I linked at the beginning of this video. Um, I did this on that project. I really love how it turned out. So I wanted to try it out on this one and I think it's a really easy and you know cheap technique to use to add texture to a project. So I am just going to continue to wrap this uh, string around this frame. So I overlap some of the string and then I go back and forth so it's on you know on top of each other and crisscrossing and just creating all of that texture um, on this side of the frame on the sides of the frame where the flowers are not because I wanted again to have a lot of texture to this project so I am now going to be adding all of the embellishments and these are Blue Fern Studios chipboard I got them from Renee's boutique on Etsy and I will link that down below uh, hopefully they're still in stock. I love Blue Fern Studios chipboard and I cut up some of the pieces and I'm just kind of adding them here and there. And I wanted, I did add it just to the top and the bottom because that frame, as you can see, is very large compared to the panel, which the panel is a four by six. So the frame, the circle frame, I want to say is maybe five by five maybe something around there five by four maybe um i love it again it's really gorgeous and this one comes in two sizes so there's a large and a small one i use the large one on this project so i'm just adding some pieces i have a large um, container with leftover like metal pieces and things like that from when I open packages, so if there's like one left or I ruin the packaging or something, I just add it all into that container. And a lot of times I try to remember to look in there before I open more packages, but a lot of times I forget. So I have made it a point to look in there first now because it is overflowing with things. As you could see, there's just lots of um, really great stuff in the in the container that I have. Uh, some of these are from Prima and honestly that butterfly I have no idea where I got it. <clears throat> I added a Finnebear heart to the center of the butterfly and then now I'm adding some letters. These are from Prima. They're little wood letters and I'm just spelling out art. I felt it needed a little little title and a lot of times I will add the Tim Holtz stickers, um, uh, titles or a quote or something, but I wanted to do something different today. I am adding a coat of gesso and I do add two coats of gesso to this. 
uh, that's really not necessary, but I just wanted to make sure that it was all nice and white because I am going to be adding the color and then adding the gesso on top to highlight the texture on all of the embellishments. So I am going to continue to add the gesso and while I do so, I just wanted to mention that I do have my own workshop uh, open. It is a Winter Wonderland tag online workshop. It is $12 and I will have a link to the video where I share all of the, all of the details in the upper right hand corner as well as down below. It's, you could find all of the details on my website. So be sure to check it out if you are interested and feel free to message me if you have any questions. All right, back to the project. I am adding some Prima Pebbles and I finally decided to stop hoarding the, the smaller ones. I love using the smaller ones, but there does not come enough in a, um, a container. So I try to hold out on using them as much as possible. And I add them here and there. I do add three on the top, two on the bottom, and then on the sides, um, well, you'll see uh, where they are in just a second. It's kind of hard to see with because it's all white now, but I do add some gesso to them, and that way I can add some color because they are plastic. The Color Bloom sprays uh, will not um, adhere to the plastic. So I added a little bit of water to the area where I am going to put this color and this color is berry wine. When I first got this color a long time ago, I used it quite often. And when I was looking for inspiration to, um, I needed inspiration for a project. So I came across a old canvas that I created and I used this color and I really liked it. It's a um, totally different type of project than what I am creating here, but um, it inspired me. So I will have a link to the video tutorial on that as well in the upper right hand corner. And um, if I forget, then be sure to leave a comment down below. It was a long time. I think it was probably like two years ago that I created that canvas. And so I take the nozzle and I'm just dipping it in the color. This way I have more control of where I'm putting the color. Uh, and this way I can, you know, again, know exactly where I'm putting the color because I didn't want it in every single, you know, I didn't want to cover the whole canvas with the color. It would have been harder to um, highlight the areas that I wanted to with the gesso because uh, the color bloom sprays are water based, so it reacts when I when you add the um, like gesso on top of it. So it kind of mixes in and just creates a lighter color of whatever color bloom spray you're using, if that makes sense. So I wanted to try and keep some of the areas white instead of adding color to all of the project. So I'm just going to continue to add the color, and I will be back.
Of course, if you are creating this project yourself, you could definitely stop here. I think it looks great. Uh, and then you can just highlight a little, you know, some of those pebbles a little bit more with gesso. But of course, I kept going and I wanted to add even more depth to this project. I um, do this with basically every single project. So you have your focal point, then you want to build up your layers, add texture, and then you want to add depth, which for the most part is a dark, dark color of um, spray or ink or um, watercolors or whatever type of medium you choose to use and then uh, you can go back over and add the lighter color again or highlight it with some white gesso like I'm going to be doing and then that way the dark color sits in all of those grooves and uh, you know where I added the light paste it just and it sits along those areas where um, the paste is and then it, again it just adds more depth to the project so i'm just going to continue to um, add the precious stone color i don't know if i said that already uh, and then i go in with a little bit of water just so that it helps it spread out a little bit and um go, you know i just like it to flow where it wants to and I do add it to the string, and I think that's important because the string does have gives a lot of um, texture to this project and interest. So I wanted it to have some more depth on the sides of where you know where it's wrapped around the frame, if that makes sense. Because I'm going to be highlighting the top and then of the string. So I wanted the sides to have a little bit more depth. So now I'm going back in with the uh, berry wine color and I am spraying it this time because I know where I have the color, where I want it, where I like it, and then I can kind of control a little bit more. Before moving on to this next step, you wanna make sure that all of the color is completely dry. And I also like to take my heat tool as I am painting on the gesso and highlighting all of those areas. This is um, this way it makes the gesso a little bit tacky and it adheres to all of, um, well, basically where I'm putting it. I find that doing this, you don't have to add so many layers and go in so many times after it's already dried because you're drying it as you're putting it on if that makes sense and then um, it just makes it a little bit whiter quicker and um, it just speeds up the whole process a little bit so i'm just going to continue to do this and i will be back
am just uh, finishing up adding the gesso and then I'm going to share with you an up close look at the project. So I really love how it turned out and I love the colors and all of the textures and the details and all of the different embellishments. And then I'm just going to show you really quickly the canvas that I was talking about in the beginning of the video where I use black gesso. So a lot of the same uh, embellishments and techniques, just different, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I used white gesso with the color on this one and then the previous uh, canvas I use black gesso with the waxes so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it on social media it really helps me out and I love reading your comments down below also here is a couple videos you also might like and be sure to hit that like button and if you are not already subscribed be sure to do so and hit that bell so you do not miss any of my videos and thank you so much for watching